the popularity of the gluten-free diet has skyrocketed. Grocery stores have dedicated sections for gluten-free products, and let's not forget about the gluten-free apps, cookbooks, and portable gluten testers. Famous celebrities such as Gwyneth Paltrow, Oprah Winfrey, and Miley Cyrus are promoting gluten-free eating by claiming that it promotes weight loss and overall well-being. In 2016, the global gluten-free market size was estimated to be worth 15 billion US dollars. Now that's insane. But what is gluten? Well, gluten is a family of storage proteins called gliadins and glutenins. It is found in wheat and related grain products such as corn, barley, and rye, as well as everyday foods such as pastas, breads, pastries, crackers, and sauces. We gave out a survey to university students to find out what they thought about being gluten-free and found out some interesting results. 50% of students said that only people with a gluten intolerance should eat gluten-free, but 28% still claimed it is a healthy lifestyle choice. Over 53% of students also believe that a gluten-free diet could help someone lose weight and become healthier. The problem is that despite the health claims for gluten-free eating, no scientific evidence suggests that a general population would be better off by excluding gluten from their diet. 68% of people also thought that a gluten-free cupcake had less calories than a regular cupcake from a grocery store. But the contrary is actually true. Gluten-free cupcakes and other products tend to be higher in calories, as extra oil, sugar, and fats are added to make them taste better. And it is well known that an increased consumption of fats and sugars can ultimately lead to obesity and onset of insulin resistance. Furthermore, a study by Dr. Norell Riley, published in 2015, demonstrated that people on a gluten-free diet may also have deficiencies in B vitamins, folate, and iron, given a lack of nutrient fortification of many gluten-free products. On the bright side, 78% of participants correctly identified that an individual with celiac disease should eat gluten-free, which showed the awareness about the disease. So what actually happens to someone who has celiac disease or gluten intolerance? Well, celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder whereby eating gluten causes the immune cells to react by mounting a fighting response against the intestine, which is a critical organ in absorption of nutrients and foods. There is no data to suggest that eating a gluten-free diet can onset celiac disease. On the contrary, a study done in Finland effectively demonstrated that introduction of gluten slowly between 4 months of age and 7 months of age can decrease likelihood of celiac disease or gluten intolerance onset in the future. So why is it that many people will say that their stomachs feel upset when they eat gluten? Many people mistake a FODMAP intolerance for gluten sensitivity and go gluten free. Problem is, this won't alleviate their symptoms. FODMAPs are a group of small carbohydrates or sugars found in everyday foods that are poorly absorbed in the small intestine and can produce gastric discomfort, abdominal pain, cramping, and bloating. Basically symptoms that overlap with symptoms of gluten intolerance, which make it very likely to confuse one intolerance with another. Some examples of FODMAP foods are garlic, asparagus, onions, cheese, dairy, honey, and apples. On this list, there are also some grain products such as barley or rye, hence why sometimes a self-diagnosis of gluten intolerance will actually not be solved by purely eating gluten-free. Besides calories and lack of nutrients, are there really any dangers to being gluten-free? Recently, a paper from the British Journal of Nutrition found that since people on the gluten-free diet consume a rice-based diet, they are at a higher risk of exposure to toxins such as arsenic and mercury. So next time you are craving a cupcake, make sure you're making the right decision for you, whether that's a gluten-free cupcake or a regular one will do.